Hello, and welcome to Supreme Commander Borderlands Forever. This is part two of the Legend of the Stars 2017 finals best of five between Zock and Whiteheart or Patrick, better known as Patrick Bones. Also, Touch Fluffy Tails or any number of other names. And Zuck is going first air on Arctic Refuge. So this is 10x10 map. A lot of the edge is not too important. These corners are a bit of dead space. So it's not the largest of 10x10s in terms of playable area. Large expansions. Very spread out mexes, makes it difficult to defend them with PDs. But this build, what's. Is, do we have another. What the fuck? Four P gens are queued up, and there's three more land factories queued up. Let's see what's in the air factory. So you get one engineer who is just fucking manually reclaiming every tree in the forest third engineer is gonna expand and then well finish the base maxes and then help the ACU he's gonna fund these factories oh my god with all of this reclaim and the fourth unit out of this air factory is a jester lab from Petrick He's working on his second factory, three pigeons, second land. He's got quite a few manual reclaim orders as well, even putting move orders in there to make sure he doesn't break trees. Still hasn't, I don't think he's reclaimed quite as much. You can see here, Zok just is not missing anything. That's, that's disgusting. Look at this. Perfect energy balance. See, he also has gotten 500 mass from this. The gesture, is it going to fly over the lab? Oh. I don't know if Petrick spotted that. It was there for a few seconds. He may have seen it. Do we have any anti air coming out? And uh, no, I don't think he saw it then. No idea if this works. <laughs> he says as the gesture gets to the base and starts to work on the engineers. When you're doing something like this, rushing a rushing an air unit at the start, whether it's a gesture or a bomber, you go straight to the base. Patrick sees the funny side of this strategy first. Not quite first gesture, but fourth gesture he has three land factories up and he has a hundred power income <laughs> oh my god ridiculous shit the lab also got killed this gesture has four kills already killing some guys that are reclaiming see this guy oh my god look at that this guy probably had more reclaim orders as well also is the expansion engineer so you want to go to the base Kill the engineers that you can. Oh, he doesn't have an inti out yet because he has so little power income he can't really afford it. But six kills on this gesture is not bad. Slowing down. Oh, this inti is a bit retarded. Forcing out A. And the gesture is going to go down. Definitely want to grab that reclaim. 161 mass. And. That's a dangerous Mantis, could get some more kills here. You can see Zok reclaiming the trees with an attack move to boost his economy. He needs the power. He's actually still not even queuing up P-Gens. He has 100 power income, four, four P-Gens. He's making air. Ridiculous. He's not even building P-Gens here, just building more factories. 
more reclaim. This guy's still on his route. And this raid, well, that's not even a raid, that's most of his army. Can do, can do a lot. Over here we have a scout giving some vision to the Mantis, but uh, he had the attack order on the engineer, but he's going to die before he completes his mission. Well cut out. And over here, Petra gets to retreat in the face of a more powerful force of Mantis. Zok has so much mass in the bank now. And well, really, for, for a while now he's had a fair bit of mass. And he needs to get spending it. Maybe he should be building engineers out of the air factory or something. Just to get... He needs build power badly. See, because he has to he has to make uh, tanks out of these land factories. Patrick is going to be doing that on his side, so... He's got to get some more NGs out for sure. So, in the mid, we have... Two T2P gens, we also have all these cars which have a fair bit of mass in them, and you have all of these buildings which also have some mass 100 to 200 mass in the, each of them, I think. Uh, well, maybe some of them are worthless, so I'm not sure which ones exactly are worth something. <clears throat> so, both ACUs generally go to mid, there's also four mexes here to grab, but. The main thing is the reclaim from the civilians. Both ACs go here. You got to take down the PD to get access with some RTs and then get to work on the PGENs, which yield obviously a lot of reclaim. See, 900, a bit of that got destroyed. You want to try avoid destroying the cars because. Uh, they have very little HP, so the reclaim will get killed quickly. Both players got their outer mexes here. Actually, Zok lost one. Might lose another. <clears throat> and Petrick's on the hunt. He actually has an attack order on this engineer already. And in mid. Zox working on the buildings, he's now moving to the P-Gen. You can't, there's a single mobile anti-air here. The rest of them are just civilians. You can see, if you don't kill the reclaim, there's about 100 mass in each of them. You can capture these cars and then drive them to your base. That is actually the best way to to get that reclaim. I'm not even joking. If you capture the cars, which you can do very quickly, then uh, yeah, you can just drive them home. Zok has just an insane score advantage. And actually, I know why that is. It's because he's killed the P-Gens. That's That is the reason. But he also is winning this game. He has a 40 T1 units. Quite a few less. For Patrick, oh, you definitely don't want to be taking PD fire. Sock is on nearly full HP. Patrick now below half. He's been raided several positions. Hasn't done as much to Zok. He's gotten some some stuff done. Uh, that's not many inties. And he has, a, he has the Jester. I don't know if he'll be able to protect that. We have a similar number of inties for... Or Zok. I don't know if he needs to go at the ACU right now, but certainly gonna push push Petrick away from mid and should be able to secure this mid reclaim, which is huge. I mean, this isn't a, an eco heavy map or a, a map with a very many maxes. So this these T two P gens in mid are absolutely huge. He can. He can take this reclaim, has a nice balance at the minute, and he can take all these mexes. It's definitely something he should take. He's even raiding here, 
base max is for Patrick. And it and you can see his income here, twenty seven mass to seventeen. Patrick losing out big time here. I think he took a fair bit of damage and Zuck economized so much on power at the start. He just had land factories up quite quickly because he didn't have to waste any time building many pigeons and uh, his raids his raids were, were quite good. Let's see over here obviously. And now with mid, that should actually be GG. I don't think there's any way Petrick can come back after losing uh, all of this mass and also giving up these mexes. It's very, it's quite difficult and a slow process to actually secure. These outward expansions are very raidable, as I said earlier. It's hard to defend them with PD because they're so spread out. And of course, you have to focus on mid at the start, so. They're not the top priority. Well cut out there by Patrick to stop this. These man just getting past. That leaves a fair bit of mass for him to reclaim. Let's see the power reclaim here. Thirty-one thousand for Zok, seventeen thousand for Patrick. Mass reclaim one k more for Zok. 6.2 to 5.1, 6.4 now. I think he's sucking up this. Uh, yeah, got the PJ in there. There's some mass in these buildings as well. He's probably gonna get. So what's the move? Do we have any teching? I don't see any T2 Max for either player. We're just sticking on T1. And it looks real good for Zok. Does need to be careful he doesn't give up map control on these uh, extremities. He does have good radar coverage so you can see that there's some expanding going on. Being very aggressive pushing Patrick, keeping him in his base, even targeting him now to do some damage but he falls back ACU supported by an army is obviously gonna crush these few mantis might be good call to go for some commander upgrade or something or just uh, chill on this map control Patrick trying to expand here and here at the same time he's gonna get raided in both positions the Jester are doing work here not being protected by the Inties and now Patrick's coming to get it. Power income also hugely favoring Zok. So you can't imagine Patrick can uh, hold on to air control for too long if Zok really wants to go for it. Chase is on. That's that's not too many inties. Yeah, Zok thinks better of it. Doesn't chase into ter to unknown territory. You don't want to chase uh, with your inties into areas where your opponent has radar and you don't. It's quite dangerous. Is a good, excellent way to uh, lose all of your interceptors. And this looks, yeah, we just have so many tanks now. We're approaching hundred. For Zok, for T1, Patrick just has far less, and I think he's also going to lose air here. Patrick or Zok is coming in with a few more, and Patrick's getting surrounded by Mantis and a few Medusa. This looks like not quite the end. But it can't be too far off. Let's speed it up slightly. I think we could see, yes, gestures coming out. Can defend against raids and raid. 
all of Patrick's maxes, you can see this position's dead, all the, these maxes are dead, this one will probably die as well. A nice sneaky factory up here. But, uh, the expansion gets raided as well. Patrick taking another fight. Zok, I think, would just gesture him to death now, shortly. Yeah, these factories are quite nice on the sides. They, uh... And also radars out in the sides, so... They're not likely to be spotted by your opponent, and... If you get raided, you can see he can quickly... Reinforce the position, and... Get build power there to... Rebuild. Unfortunately, it's not a big deal in this... Particular scenario where he is... Patrick is quite far behind. certainly something to try because we have uh, the big map pool back in the ladder and I think Arctic Refuge is in there right now we have 30 maps in the pool I think I think it's 30 either way a lot more than before the blow deer pool well I guess the blow deer pool is the five map pool bumped up to a massive seven. So let's see how well the pool does. Should be interesting. Patrick still just guiding these mantis. Zock wondering if Patrick will ever die. The answer is no so far. Gestures all across the map, just killing everything, killing BDs, Mantis, Mexes. How many how many gestures do we have now? Ten gestures. And I don't think it really matters if you have an AA turret up. It's gonna need a lot of them to save this commander on 4500 HP <clears throat> and here we go this could be it oh he gets a vet That's all she wrote. Zoc wins this one. Better than expected. I mean, that was pretty impressive. Interesting build. Three engineers followed by a jester. Only four P gens, and he had four factories. All the all the power, all the trees sucked up manually. On every single tree group on the or behind the base, Petrick got denied his, or at least some of them because of that. Jester actually killed the lumberjack engines. Overall, really nice game from Zok. Very very well played. Once he got mid, that was the end. Now let's move on to the fourth game. The score is now 2-1 to Zok, having won the second and third maps. Now we move on to map number four, classic map, of a much maligned size. It's 5x5. It is Canis River, better known to most people, probably at this stage, considering how long it's been out of the ladder pool, uh, better known as its uh, team game variant, which is 10x10, 
and full of reclaim and a lot more mixes and broken or fixed or special hydros and all that shit but this is 5x5 the original version and we got double Aeon no reason to go full 5x5 well yeah I mean double Aeon on Canis River is full 5x5 all right this river in the middle is of course a big feature and a big reason why both players are playing Aeon. Aeon is already very good on the 5x5 maps thanks to a power of the Aurora. But when you add some water in the middle of the map then it just gets ridiculous doesn't it? So we have six maxes in the base. Unusual for most maps. Can't, uh, there's, I can't really think of a map which has six base maxes. Map makers now usually go four and then they put them in a perfect little grid. Or they put three and you always get a hydro. This hydro is a bit outside the base so you can see here this is what commonly happens is the ACU doesn't go to the hydro and uh, that makes it a vulnerable spot I mean if you get to Nitro Hydro at the start when you're depending on it, it can be very dangerous Patrick's lab didn't go for the hydro thankfully for him because Zock has his ACU covering it so obviously uh, wary of the of Patrick's labs. The lab instead went down to this corner where an NG usually grabs mass and expands up here or or just exp or just uh, grabs all the big rocks here. There's a few tasty ones. We have two labs for Zok as well. There's a fight going on but it doesn't even do any damage to the Aurora. Aurora are very good against labs. They two shot every lab including the mech marine and obviously the range difference is massive between a lab and an aurora attempted micro and again crushed so good start from Patrick he's getting his air factory up now Zok already has three land factories done going for a fourth land factory Fifth and six queued, no air factory queued. We'll see, yes, a PD here as per usual. If you are familiar with this map, as generally what happens, you get a PD up here. These, uh, these hills are terrible for fighting with Aurora. See all this uneven terrain. Wanna try and avoid fighting too much around here with Aurora. Try fight down here. Patrick grabbing some rocks. So we'll just see some T1 land. Patrick's got a bomber out. Obviously extremely good against the Aurora. And here you can see the Aurora dodging back and forth. Patrick being very aggressive. You can see even with, with these Aurora you can come around the back of the base, harass around here. Which is actually what he's going to do with this guy. This, not such a good move, maybe slightly too aggressive, the ACU has appeared and he's going to manually reclaim these wrecks. Definitely want to be doing that. To be at the top, every little helps on a 5x5. This PD will not be completed because the bomber is en route. Oh, did he dodge? Oh, almost, that was very close to dodging there, but not quite. Aurora running into the base and getting killed. He could have finished that mix, but not a huge deal. This bomber is not long for this world. What can he kill? Ooh, two Aurora and two NGs. Definitely worth it. You can see that, 
That was very nice. So, it's forced out anti air. I still don't have a, an air factory queued. It's going to rely on the anti airs to kill these bombers. Aeon anti airs have uh, 250 HP, which is the lowest of any T1 mobile anti air. They could be one shot by most uh, T1 bombers, except the Aeon one, which has 200 damage on it. And as compensation, the Aeon has slightly better range on its mobile AA than the other factions. This bomber looking to get kills with the Aurora dodging. And I think Patrick might be aiming for this. Uh... Look at these dodges, he keeps dodging. Really good movement from Zok with this army. A lesser player would have lost every single Aurora already. Just loses one to that bomb. Yeah, I thought Petrick might want to get to this Hydro and kill it, but he has to run now. He's in trouble, he's lost some units. He actually should leave one behind here to uh, kill the Mexus. Yeah, he sends three back. Bombers finally go down to the AA, which were a bit out of position or perhaps they had already died and he had to rebuild them, I'm not sure. We have an air factory going up because, well, Inties are just better than mobile anti airs Much more useful. Also, the scouting from air is invaluable. A lot of factories up here. Patrick with an expert eco balance. He has had to pause there to achieve that though. If that's what you gotta do, that's what you gotta do. Zok does not have a nice looking map here. No vision on anything. And not much map control. He's lost his expansion. He mixes. He can't. Oh, he has no vision for these Aurora, so they're essentially useless. And he's getting pushed and losing a lot of units. We have so many units for, for Petrick. We have 40, 40 tanks right now. Half that for Zok looks very, very bad. And Petrick also on double the mass income. He's secured so much of the map. The bombers were very nice. Doing serious damage in the base. Killing this NG back here, which denied the PD. And also those early fights where he pushed in, kept Zok in his base, and uh, it's an even bigger deal for an AM player. If, you, if he's stuck in his base, it takes so long for the Aurora to even get across the map, so he, he expanded, I mean, so safely. Uh, because of how aggressive he was able to be, he just was able to grab so much of the map. And then, uh, yeah, the bombers forcing the Aurora to just dodge around the place. And uh, an anti air set to be made as well, which means less Aurora. And now I think we wait for Whiteheart to just put the squeeze on, raid every position. You can see here, he already has far more tanks. And more income. So the only thing he needs to not do is uh, draw. I don't see any way he gets uh, sniped or anything, but definitely doesn't want to draw. I think he might want to be, might want to go for the kill right now. Even Sox units out position. I think he knows this is over. Losing health rapidly, a very large army of Aurora bearing down upon his ACU. And he is gone. Easy, says Zok. Yes, but for who? 
quality. Yeah, there. I I don't know who picked this map or why, because I don't think either of them are fans of first five x five or um or Aeon mirror matchups on five x five. So who who selected and why? They remain a mystery. Perhaps someone can. One of them can leave a comment. I just saw at the end there. Just, it was like, three thousand wasted power for the entire game from Patrick. It was like, or just under. It was like two thousand nine hundred power wasted for the entire game. That's absurd. Less than 3,000 power wasted. I mean, you have 4,000 storage. And he wasted less than 3,000 power. God damn, no wonder he won. That's fucking ridiculous. I don't think I've ever seen someone waste so little power. So, here we go. The score is 2-2. And we are finishing the best of five on Badlands. We will find out who is the champion of 2017. Cybern for Zok. UEF for Petrick. Finally, we don't have a mirror matchup. Very unusual to not have a mirror. We almost always do in tournaments generally. In most of the casts, I think almost every game I cast from this tournament has been a mirror. And I think actually all the games I played in the tournament were mirrors as well. These are tree groups by the way. Can grab them on your way to the maxes. A pro tip. Meme heart, heading to the hydrocarbon. Not doing the Zoc build, which is over here. Oh, wait, what? What the fuck? He's he's making the factory before these other two pigeons. And he's fucking stalling. Because Yeah, that's gonna make you stall. That's very strange. See usually you built the Oh god, did he just fuck the build like by accident? In the final match. Oh no. He actually fucked the build. You're supposed to build this, these two pigeons that he had queued before the second factory. Okay, we have a couple labs moving to raid. I'm not sure where his ACU is going. This lab aiming for the engineer who's reclaiming in here. You can see him. On the radar, and this guy just looking for the expanding NG. A striker appears, and it's super effective. Sox build is AIDS. Oh, that's really. That's very sad that he just made that mistake. Can happen to anyone, but at this stage. For that to happen, it is rough. Very rough. So, let's see how much it's gonna hurt him. This lab got a kill on something, but I don't think it was an engineer. Look at the micro. He's trying to. Uh, Emulate Petrix 
lab in on the Twin Rivers game, unable to. He got a kill there. I think he may have just killed a scout in mid or something. On the way. Didn't get the engineer who was expanding. So both labs cut out. This first striker gets annihilated by three labs. Zok already aiming for these hydros. This one's queued up as well. And you can see Petrick does have an advantage from his build order now. These Mantis in behind are going to be very annoying. Petrick has uh, got less mass income, I think, or not mass income, mass uh, reclaimed. Also actually mass income. But uh, I think it's because he had to send this engineer away from the lab so he lost a lot of uh, manual reclaim orders on the rocks in the in the cr around the crater here that's a nice raid this engineer is gonna die you can probably finish off the mexes afterwards good to get a fast radar in these over here is quite good especially when you're playing someone like Zok who's gonna put mantis everywhere again radar over here is good he has one queued directly after his factory. Definitely want to get factory up here. And then, uh, as you can see, get the reclaim, which you have to zoom in very close to see. There's so rocks here. The rest of it is just mostly trees. You can see there's... These are all trees, and I think it's mostly tree groups even back here. So, probably at some stage, someone will farm the shit out of that. Every map has trees somewhere, it seems. And Patrick moving in to get the air control. But actually, the two Inties got in behind him and are doing massive damage. He still wins air, though. I think he had his air factory done before and, he, and instantly. Now that he's won air control, goes back home, queues up the bomber. These mexes did get raided. And the Mantis run on to find new targets Zok has expanded got almost every mix now just a couple at the back he needs to grab Patrick a bit slower especially to this position radar is a nice kill to get if you want to aim for that also if you kill the radar and the engineer then uh, it's gonna be super annoying because there's can't even build a radar in this position then for a while which could allow more raiding to happen so now we get the nice stable st stabilization we have six and a half minutes in about you know so everyone has expanded taken their taken what is rightfully theirs now we'll have some fights for the plateaus we'll have some raids but they become less effective because there's radars across the map if you look at Zok you can see looks a bit like Mickey Mouse here and Patrick the same nice coverage so he sees quite a large force here and uh, instantly it's bringing his units across you can see when he moves forward, he's into radar range and suddenly a whole host of Mantis come and wipe out his army. It's difficult to get uh, raids through here now. So even if, because uh, the mechs are so far back on Badlands, you can see he just has plenty of time to react. Pretty bad loss here in, in mid. Not a huge deal, but... Uh, Definitely a negative. Does have a PD which is nice in mid to secure a couple of these maxes. Top plateau is dying for Patrick it seems. And he's now dropped to the left so not, not wasting his time uh, edge building. This is a good raid stopping the reclaim from happening. Also it would normally stop 
Patrick from getting this plateau, but uh, since he's dropped there, it's fine. Mantis find their way past the PD, at least some of them do, others are not so lucky. Oh, nice dodge. And this is annoying, getting in behind. ACU should not be able to catch them if they sprint. T2 land, 80%. And 80% for Zoc, just, uh, just very, very slightly behind the T2 land. We have only one mechs upgrading here. It's almost done. Zoc, meanwhile, has one done. 150%, 125%, he's assisting, as you should do, if you have the mass in the bank, might as well assist your mexes. This raid eventually now gets caught out, it looks like he didn't kill that guy, OP UEF mexes, save the day. And Petrick still, there's still a fight on the plateau here. Medusa coming to mid to uh, kill this PD. Petrick grabbing the reclaim. He's actually missed the chunkiest bits here in the middle of the crater. Zoc doing a great job, has reclaimed a lot of stuff here with an attack move. Also, this is completely cleaned. Working on this at the minute. Patrick cleaned this up and is working on this. Pretty much a mirror. A lot of units in mid now for Patrick and no units on the right. He's got a PD up instead. Uh, you can't really run to here with just a few mantis. The the pillars will just come out of the factory and clean it up extremely easily. This side is much more conducive to Mantis runbys if you can get past this commander. Zoc with a nice economy right now. Four T2 Max is up. Patrick lagging behind, but he is going for the T2 land push. This is three support factories just about done. And he's going for the gun as well. Zoc is just not making any T2 whatsoever. We're going straight for T3 right now. And he's seen three support factories and a HQ. He doesn't have that many units. I mean oh we actually have three uh three rhinos, so we're not we're not totally skipping. T2. We have three rhinos. We have 2k mass in the bank. Let's see. Lawyers queued up. He cancelled them. Lawyers queued up again. Needs more assists on this factory. He's so much mass. Oh, he's instead assisting his uh, T2 max upgrades. But look at this, we have not many mexes and we have support factories up, so this is pretty ballsy to be on for his T3 rush. Patrick, oh I think he saw that, I think he saw the upgrade here. Oh hey look at that, you see that? Damn that is OP, look at that bug. That's like free intel. I wonder if that works in the game. But uh, yeah, when you do actually scout, then you can uh, you can see the upgrade bar. But I wonder if through Fog of War you can actually see this. Because look, now it says Tech 3 Land Factory HQ. Hmm. I wonder if there's free intel to get there. I wonder. Right now we have... 11 pillars out. Zoc. Just getting a bit of control here. Gonna grab some reclaim probably. Kill some mexes, but we have a 
nano gun comm in middle and we have all of Petrick's pillars in middle and most of his units and we go to Zox's view and we have two loyalists this army in mid is minuscule and dying the loyalists are coming out oh I'm scared Zox ACU also just trapped on the other side of the map if if Petrick takes a left it takes a right here I don't know if if Zoc can I mean there's nowhere to run really perhaps he could just be chased down by this commander but I think the commander's gone straight for the base doesn't give a fuck about the ACU if he kills the entire base he wins the games as well and he's moving in he needs to find these oh he sees the loyalists if he can overcharge them it's game over oh this energy storage is gonna kill some valuable build power right now when it dies we have a T1 PD we have a T2 PD up but it's very far forward we have a second one up already this is just too far forward it's gonna die unfortunately for Zoc and do we have Lobos in here we have quite a few Lobos and they're gonna do massive damage I think he, he can target fire the land factory and that will stop anything from coming out of it also killing the Angies would be great I think this is just dead Petrix ACU really invulnerable to everything Zog has right now. We have PDs up, but there's only three of them. And they are Cybran. The T3 HQ is dead. Even have bombers coming in to kill something. Maybe some build power. The Loyalists are still alive. They haven't been caught by this ACU. Look at the the Cybern PDs just plinking away. Not able to do enough at all. Oh, the lawyers might actually just get overcharged here, surely. Or not. They live another day, but Zoc won't. We have an upgrade going up here. A lot of factories going up. Zoc desperately trying to stay in the game. I don't think that does he have overcharge even? No, he doesn't of course. Also doesn't have any power. You can see his dead to TP gen. This one is alive somehow. And the lawyer is doing massive work, but this is unsavable. Firing a miracle, I mean a miracle of miracles. We don't have any T2 air. Oh, this is a support factory. I think he meant to make a, a HQ there. That's... Oh, damn. It just gets worse. Drops now. Insult to injury. bit of a pause report maybe not sure what's going on there maybe it's to do with this T2 factory over here or not sure the base continues to die to the pillars and over here Artie's moving in in this position PD's going PD's going up, P Gen's going up. This T2 P Gen has died now. And we wait for Zoc to die. Unlosable position obviously now. He's just he's just spamming RTs everywhere. RT only gameplay.
And just just in case there's some outrageously sneaky T2R factory spamming Corsairs, he just sticks the flax beside his ACU. Also got a shield out. Oh, it's up here. Dying to Medusa. Well, this is it. Patrick will be the 2017 champion. GG. Patrick is the champion. And we got full a full five game series. Three two to Patrick. Congratulations. Thanks everyone for playing. And thanks for all the great games. This one wasn't that great, unfortunately. This this T3 rush got punished so hard by by Patrick. Just the the perfect counter really to what Zok was doing. I mean, Zok made well, Zok made along with that T3 rush, he made six T2 maxes when Patrick had two, and of course there was that sad sad error that happened at the start where Zok sort of messed up his build order built a factory before the pgens he intended to make but still fought on well and yeah maybe the t3 rush just wasn't the right decision here Patrick made exactly the right decision versus it with that UEF push the pillars, the arties. Oh well. Uh, that's it for me. I may also cover the third place match. We shall see. Between Ajax and Torin, I believe. But uh, yeah, thanks to all the guys for all the games. And thanks to everyone for watching. I'll see you soon with uh, maybe some ladder casts from the new big pool. Can show off some uh, ancient maps that a lot of people probably don't even know exist or have forgotten exist. So, see you next time.